This is the Magnus Effect. And as the ball loses speed, the drag increases, and the ball turns hard at the end of its flight. But if spin rate and velocity are the keys of curves, why does the soccer ball break so much more? After all, Adam's pitch has more velocity and spins three times faster than Abby's kick. The difference is density. It's almost impossible to throw a beach ball in a straight line. That's because the beach ball isn't dense enough to withstand the air pressure surrounding it during flight. A soccer ball is just one-tenth as dense as a baseball. So its lower density makes the soccer ball much more susceptible to the Magnus effect than the baseball. And this is why a soccer player can create a bigger curveball than a baseball player. Mission accomplished for sure. Awesome. This whole thing has been awesome, and to know that there are so many people out there doing research in, in this show, it just goes to show you that there's so much more that we have to learn. Cool. That is cool. Any way you spin it. Coming up on Sports Science, want to learn how to fake someone out of his shoes? Next, one of the most exciting running backs in the NFL conducts a master class in the art of the juke. Stick around for more of the inside scoop from the best athletes in the world. This is Sports Science Tricks of the Trade. Football is a game of inches. Just a few inches of separation from a defender. Just a glimpse of daylight. And the best can leave you in the dust. What we want to know is, how do the best ball carriers fake a defender out of his job? It's time to break down the art of the juke. To do this, we put the ball in the hands of one of the NFL's most exciting young running backs. Maurice Jones Drew. At 5 feet 7 and 200 plus pounds, Maurice is one of the hardest men to tackle in the NFL. The toughest part about playing football is mental. It's never the physical part, because if you weren't a physical specimen, you wouldn't be able to play in the game. So it's all what you have upstairs. So how does Maurice fake out a defender? Using an eye tracker, accelerometer, an A-pod gyroscope, and our Phantom high-speed camera, we'll reveal the critical components of a Jones-Drew juke. Time for an unprecedented forensic breakdown of a fake out. Showtime. Vision. His eyes scan the field in 50 millisecond intervals. In 50 milliseconds, a hummingbird doesn't even flap its wings once. My running back coach taught me read the book, so read look left to right. So it's kind of keeping everything simple, everything the same, because once you give them one hint, they know what's going on. The next critical component of the fake out is the head. Maurice's head moves right, left, then right again, and moves a total of only eight inches. That may not sound like a lot, but since the brain detects motion by the millimeter, it's more than enough to throw a defender off balance. Now, Maurice is set up for the most important part of the fake out, the cut. 
when the right foot plants, the body absorbs over three times its body weight, over 600 pounds of force. Then the planted leg drives down into the ground with a force up to five times his body weight. In the course of only three cuts, his legs are doing as much work as a weightlifter doing almost two and a half tons worth of squats. Add up those components, eyes, head, and powerful legs, and you've got a man who can dance you into knots. Don't believe it? Quick, which way is he going? To your left? or right. If you guess left, you just got left behind. But even if you don't fall for the head fakes, Maurice Jones-Drew has another trick up his sleeve. The spin move. Coaches teach defenders to watch a player's hips. But what happens when the hips disappear in the blink of an eye? As he makes his cut, surprisingly, Maurice does two things you're not supposed to do. He turns his back on the defender and actually leaves his feet for a split second. But by putting himself at risk, he gains an edge. Facing a defender, Maurice presents a two-foot wide target. Spinning at 80 RPM. Maurice moves his body two feet and cuts the target size in half. Factoring in the time it takes for our brains to process visual stimuli, the defender is left with only a tenth of a second to react. That's as fast as a chameleon's tongue snatching its prey. And the torque he creates makes him harder to tackle. Since he rotates on a vertical axis four times faster, than that amusement park ride that spins so fast, you stick to the wall. When Maurice Jones-Drew displays the art of the juke, even rival defenders like Luis Castillo are blown away. Hey, it spins. <sighs> that was crazy, especially the one where you were right at the camera. You spun right off it. <sighs> Man, I might have to use that against you. Coming up on Sports Science, we've all seen baseball players warming up with weights on their bats. Does this trick help them? It feels a little lighter, I think. Uh, it feels a little better than the first time. And how about golfers? How much does it help when we warm up swinging two clubs? Feel and real aren't always the same thing. We'll reveal the surprising answer when we continue with Sports Science, Tricks of the Trade. Baseball players insist that warming up with 16-ounce donuts increases their bat speed and thus their power. He it to deep right. the ball is out of here. But is it valid? Could all those players in the big leagues who use donuts be wrong? Do weighted warm-ups really increase your bat speed? To find out, our first guinea pig is collegiate batter. Brian Burke. We're going to test whether swinging a weighted bat really does increase bat speed into the sweet spot. We have a regular baseball bat that uh, has been instrumented with some micro strain gyroscopes. So when you come around with the bat, we'll be able to see exactly how fast you're coming around. You all ready? Let's do it. Let's, all right, do it. Let's play ball. To get a baseline reading, we first test Brian's swing without using weights to warm up. Brian takes 10 swings and averages 69 miles per hour on each one and routinely connects with the sweet spot. Now it's donut time. Will his bat speed increase? Same. Here's this. So how does it feel now? It feels a little lighter, I think. Uh, it feels a little better than the first time. Okay. With the weight on that one, so we'll see how it goes. So how 
did the weighted warm-up affect Brian's swing? Surprisingly, Brian's bat speed actually went down after swinging the weighted bat from 69 miles per hour to just over 68. This slight reduction in speed does two things. First, slower bat speed means less force is transferred to the ball, which means he loses distance on the ball flight. Second, his timing is off. Our Phantom high-speed camera reveals that on average, he misses the sweet spot by several inches. Instead of efficiently transferring energy to the ball, the vibration sends shock waves down the bat, transferring stinging energy to the batter's hands. Harry Husband is a pitching and hitting instructor who has spent years analyzing the physics of baseball. Our studies show that there is a slight amount of inability to hit to get the fat part of the bat to the ball at exactly the right time. Let's take a closer look at why swinging a weighted bat might decrease your bat speed and harm your swing. Swinging a weighted bat is supposed to help a batter feel faster at the plate. But during those warm-ups, the muscles in the arms and shoulders are being trained to contract slower. And when muscles contract at a slower pace, they use more red, slow-twitch fibers, which specialize in endurance, instead of white, fast-twitch fibers, which fire two to three times faster. So by using weights to warm up, a batter is actually priming the wrong muscles to do the job. So by warming up with a weighted bat, a player is actually doing more harm to his game than good. So is that true for all sports? What about sports where the ball isn't moving, like golf? To find out, we head to the Titleist Performance Institute in Oceanside, California. Performance guru Greg Rose will analyze the swings of PGA golfer Dave Phillips. Well, the beautiful thing about here is we've got our launch monitor, and we can actually prove if this works or if it doesn't work. Let's do it. Okay, let's go. First, we run a baseline test, having Dave warm up without weights. So we've got 160 mile an hour ball speed. The ball carried 262 yards. That's pretty good. Dave launched balls at 161 miles per hour, which carried an average of 254 yards per drive. Now it's time to try a weighted warm-up with two clubs. Okay, let's do it now. Okay. You ready? Okay. Oh, this club feels really light now. Well, it felt faster. Felt faster? Yeah. All right, so we got the radars picking up the ball. Dave's swing doesn't look much different after the weighted warm-up. But there's one crucial difference.